Hey everyone, hope you are doing well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the brushless motor output shaft diameter size. We're gonna ask the big question of, if your brushless motor manufacturer that you're looking to purchase a motor from has a couple different options of the output shaft size diameter, which one should you specifically choose? And the big question is, how do you know which which one to choose? Does one perform better than the other? Is one going to break? Maybe one offers more hardware or gears or prop adapters for that specific output diameter. We're going to look at it from those specific perspectives, so let's get started. I went through this with a few different motor combinations with shaft sizes and I did find out that it's reasonable to assume that if a motor manufacturer offers a couple different shaft sizes that more than likely those are going to be fine for the application that you are placing that motor in. If we make the assumption, and it's a quite reasonable assumption to make that a motor manufacturer will not offer you a output diameter shaft size that could possibly fail then what do you base your selection on? Well, the most reasonable thing to base your selection on is what kind of hardware is there out there? If you are into radio control cars and you have an option to select maybe that 1 8 inch shaft size versus a 5 millimeter shaft size, you may want to consider what type of pinion gears are there out there for your specific application. Maybe you're looking at using mod 1 type gearing and you notice that a 5 millimeter millimeter shaft size is going to be the one that has the most options. This is what I would recommend to select. Get that size that is going to match your specific requirements and give you lots of different options to choose from. This is going to help you in the long run. The same idea would apply to you if you have a radio control brushless motor for the radio control airplane scene or maybe even a radio controlled boat. Now what's really interesting about the airplane and the boat scenario is that you should expect to see less stress within the output shaft of your brushless motor. If you're enjoying this video, I'd ask that you hit that like button down below. This lets Google and YouTube know that you like the video so that it can be shown to others that have the same mindset as you and I. And if you want to see more educational type content for the RC hobby, hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you can get notified when we release another video. Now let's head over to the whiteboard and find out what happens if a motor manufacturer were to select a smaller diameter output shaft for your specific application. The scenario that we're gonna be taking a look at here today is of a brushless motor. We're gonna assume a mock-up of the Castle 1721 uh, 2400 kV. The actual size of the motor shaft is 8 millimeters and the big question is what happened if that was not 80 millimeters and it was 5 millimeters. We're going to go through everything here with the assumption that it's 5 millimeters and it's used in a radio control car application. The big question is, is that shaft now going to fail? Well, we're going to take a look at that by analyzing a couple different sections on the shaft. Now these sections are essentially the smallest point of area that you can imagine that occurs on the shaft, about 90 degrees spaced from one another. And the reason why I want to do this is because I have to have a few different stresses that are actually adding up in these areas. This motor is going to be used in a radio control car and this is where you get this extra step here that adds in. This here is two gears that are meshing. You apply torque to one of those gears and right at the meshing point, you create this extra or additional force because you're trying to rotate that gear. And it only occurs on one part of the gear. It's only on one side, on one point specifically on that gear. Unlike a prop that contributes its rotational energy equally everywhere on that prop, it's not the same for a gear and that's why things are different and can contribute to a bending stress that we'll see here very shortly. I worked out the maximum torque that we can get based off of 500 amps and that's about 2 newton meters and then I worked out the force that we can get from this 2 newton meters using a, a 30 tooth pinion and that's where we get about 124 newtons. Now what I've done with that is I've simplified it to make it easier so I can actually go through this in a reasonable amount of time and I get these two different scenarios playing out where we look at 
point A, which comes from the side here, and point B, which is right on the top of that shaft section. So those are the small areas that we're going to consider for our analysis. We run through A by going through a bunch of stress that occurs at A, and we get that bending moment that I was talking about because of this mesh as our largest number here, and I've circled that in red. And then our total stress in that area is 200 and just shy of 260 megapascals. We look at the other area, which is area B. We go through that analysis and we get a total of 89.5 megapascals. And this 89.5 megapascals is because of majorly the shear stress that takes place as we're trying to apply a torsional load or torsional torque from our motor to our gear. That's actually trying to twist that shaft apart and we notice that the actual stress that you get from that is quite lower than the stress that you get from a bending moment. Really interesting to see that. Then we go and try and combine all of these things so we can get an actual resulting stress and we get a resultant stress of about 301 megapascals. What does this tell us? Well, we have a stress of 301 megapascals compared to the yield stress. The 301 compared to the typical steel yield stress is larger. So essentially this tells us that the shaft will fail. A five millimeter shaft is not going to work well even at a factor of safety of one for our scenario. We do need a larger diameter shaft. And we'll go and back this up by running an FEA on the computer just to see what that shows us in terms of stress. Here is our FEA or finite element analysis. What I did is I drew this rectangular piece on the end of the shaft and I fixed it to the shaft just so we can actually place a load on this rectangular section that would essentially mimic our bending moment and our torsional shear stress all at the same time. I did not place a force on the end, whether it be putting the shaft in compression or tension, that's gonna be very minor. So we don't need to do that. So let's take a look at what this tells us. We'll jump right over to our properties. This is an important property here, the yield strength, 221 megapascals. And this comes right from plain carbon steel. We just used a generic steel. Uh, the, the steel could vary and it probably could vary from about 190 to 280 in its yield strength depending on what the manufacturer of that specific shaft uses. Here we can see we fix one end of the shaft, we place a force that's 124 newtons on the other end of the shaft and then we can jump down to our conclusion which is going to be shown in this area here. So ultimately what we're trying to look at is where the stress accumulates and have you ever seen someone who has broken their shaft on their brushless motor, odds are it's occurred right where the shaft meets the bearing. This is where it's going to be the highest amount of stress, especially for any bending moment that is placed on the shaft itself. If it is a torsional shear stress, this could happen at any moment. Odds are it probably does happen at the base here, but it could happen at a defect somewhere right in the shaft. If it's a little bit weaker there, it's gonna happen at the weakest point, where if you place it in an actual bending moment, as you see what we've done here, this is going to make certain that the high stress concentration is exactly in this area. And at the end of the shaft, we could see all of this blue because there's essentially zero stress at the very end due to this torque that's applied as well as the bending moment that's applied at that location. Ultimately, what this tells us is we don't need to know anything about engineering to look at this. All we need to do is look at our graph and it shows us that if the yield strength, this is where material begins to fail, if it occurs where this arrow is, we have stress that's above that, meaning this material is going to fail. We ended up manually calculating about a 3.0 here, and we are going through the computed calculation at 2.5, so we're a little bit more conservative in our manual calculation as compared with this full-on FEA analysis. I just wanted to show this. If we actually have the torque being applied from our motor to the end here, we have the same torsional shear stress all along the length of our shaft. And if we look at the von Mises graph here, our yield strength still at that 2.206, and the maximum that we have is 1.537. We are lower on our shear stress, therefore we are not gonna have this material fail. So if we actually pull this much 
torque and we use something like a propeller adapter for a propeller, we would not have the additional component added in and we'd have less stress involved. Let's now conclude the video. It is quite reasonable to make the assumption as we did at the very beginning of this video that a motor manufacturer is not going to offer you up a brushless motor that could possibly fail in your specific application. Even if they do have a larger versus a smaller option for the output shaft of your motor. In this case, you want to make the selection that offers you the most choices for what you're going to use this brushless motor for. And if you're still concerned about the potential of an output shaft failing on you, just keep in mind that we went through an extreme example today where we essentially used a brushless motor that doesn't actually exist because you cannot even get that motor with that output shaft size. Well guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.